you, you can try to figure it out all you want, it's, but it's sitting there right in front of your face, but no one's ever, you never see it on the internet, you're never going to see it anywhere. No, nope, you will never see it anywhere. This invisible world. You know it if you're in it, and they know you're in it or not in it, you know, just by, by being around you. So the, the, it's, it's, it's beyond psychic, you know. So it's like, uh, it's the all-seeing eye, folks. What does the all-seeing eye stand for? What does the all-seeing eye stand for? It stands for what I'm talking about. It's a interconnection through a psychic third eye link between all people who are on that side of things forming a, a surveillance network that is global, that sees everything. Because it's within you. That's the all-seeing eye. It's within you. That's what it stands for in occultic circles. I went and refreshed myself on this, so I know what I'm talking about. I went and refreshed myself on that original symbolism of the all-seeing eye. It originally, the eye in the pyramid, originally stood for the, 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 the quote, third eye. That third eye is what we're talking about. That is the secret world, right? That is the silent world that people know of, but they don't say. That is where people are psychically linked to each other, and that's how they know. Look, you want to know how you get targeted, you TIs? Okay, you're in a room with all these people, right? They're all psychically linked, except you. Okay, case closed. Oh, you might say it again in case you missed that? You're in a room. Everyone is psychically linked with the third eye, except you. Even though you all have the same social circles, you're all sinners, you all hang out, you all eat dinner, you all do whatever, you, for whatever reason, are not hooked up. So they target you as a threat. Oh, it starts there, but then it manifests in, you know, electronic harassment. And the worst thing for me was infrared. I think that really was really bad. But I mean, you know, all these, who cares about the physical external manifestations? That's nothing. The main thing about uh, gang stalking, targeting, cause stalking, uh, bullying, um, and all this stuff is that they're psychically linked. Otherwise, there's no way you could like fly halfway around the world and they, they, they walk into the bar and they go, we know who you are. That There's no way they could do that. I mean, that would be scary as hell to go. I would hate to be the person, oh, I went through that. I hate to be the person going through that kind of targeting. Because that would be, that would make the Truman Show look like, uh, you know, patty cakes. Good thing people don't have to go through that. They'd flip out. They think there's nowhere they could run, nowhere they could hide, nowhere they could go. They just would flip out. Good thing it doesn't get that bad. <laughs> oh, it gets worse than that. You have like entire blocks, entire areas of real estate that suddenly go into another, the people there all of a sudden are just all aiming at you, and the next thing you know, they're your friend. Like it's, it's flipping dimensionally on you, which is scary as hell. They'll flip entire dimensions just to harass you. Oh, once you know what kind of powers you're dealing with, uh, none of these things should seem odd. But most people, unfortunately, that are TIs, the big problem they have is they only want to see it as a terrestrial issue. They don't see the the real cause of it all. They don't see where it comes from. They don't see why it has symmetry and why it has order and, and uh, why it has certain names and certain numbers and names and places and things that, that uh, they don't see why it is what it is. So they only see the surface and they keep trying to catch people. And usually when they do catch somebody, they go, I don't know what you're talking about. You sound crazy. You need to shrink. The entire thing comes from another dimension. The one I've been speaking of, the all-seeing eye dimension. All of it comes from there, and none of it really comes from here except for the physical, you know, satellites or whatever they're going to use to uh, target people. And, and, you know, that, that, those are external. That's like chemtrails. You know, it's an external manifestation of something deeper. And until people see it that way, they're never going to get cured. Uh, well, let me add the proviso. You're never cured unless you join them. I mean, technically. 
which you are not going to do. Because even if you wanted to, God has prevented it. Because you are his child, so at best you you better you know best um, get on with understanding where you belong and who you belong to, and that will take you ninety percent of the way. The other ten percent, you're just going to have to tough it out. But ninety percent is pretty good. That'll give you all your answers and all your you know comfort and calm and understand that through prayer in Jesus' name. We have a path laid out for us. I mean, it's really clear. He hedges up the way for me, and I see that it's step by step, but I don't want to really look left or right. I'm trying to stay on that course. It's hard enough because I got all kinds of, you know, attacks going on. They're telling me, oh, did God really say that? You know, all those sort of demonic, satanic things and witchcraft, all kinds of stuff, all kinds of uh, uh, debris (laughs) coming at me with 150 mile an hour winds. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. But the main comfort I have is that the Lord is there for real. And, you know, he helps me with those things. So I have a place to go to plead my case or to to ask for comfort or to ask for protection. And then he'll guide me through. But I don't see any other way for the targeted individual <clears throat> what are you going to do? Go on your own recognizance? Go on your own mind? You, they'll they'll kill you. They'll crush you in a million. Well, they've done it. They'll they'll drive you to suicide. You won't be able to make it on your own. It, you know, here here's a comforting maybe maybe not so comforting, but here's sort of a comforting word. Nobody can make it on their own. Okay, none of us, none of us humans can make it on our own. There's a bigger force than us. You can either join the dark side and. They won't take you if you're not supposed to be there, by the way. Oh, I know. You know what? I know plenty of people that tried to be like one to fit in and be cool, be one of them. It never happened. Why? Because, you know, they're too stupid to realize it at the time, but God protected them. God has his own. I like to call it this. They bounced off the mirror. They tried to get it. So anyway, the reason I'm bringing this, 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 this whole thing up, you know, there's a light side to dark, there's God, there's Satan, there, but there's a re- there really is a, another dimension here, another world here. And so when people say, how can there be witnesses? How can, I know you're all good people. You, you know, God bless you for being innocent. But at some point, you have to have your eyes open a little bit. And, and one of it is, how can there, let me ask you the question, how could the corruption that we just described here today with the 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 you know the, the innocent guile of child no, no guile of children, just matter of factly saying what was going on. How can that exist next to the narrative that everyone's accepted a uh, single shooter? You know, blah blah blah. And he goes in, he you know shoots up the place, and they were having drills, but you know, and ignoring all the rest of the story. How can that? How can that be like that? Or this whole investigation of Trump. How can it be? How, or any other thing. Or 9-11, Building 7. How can it be? How can it persist? How can it be? How can that actually be? I, you know, right? Unless there's another world more powerful than this one that is the real world and we're in the fake world. That's the only way it could be. Otherwise, it would be in your face. People would be upset about it. But they're not. Well, of course, the good people are. And we have a lot of good people here in this country. You know, we do. We have a really good, strong praying remnant because I meet people all the time and they're praying for, for, you know, God's mercy and they're praying for their neighbors. And, you know, that's, and that's really the thing we have to do. We're not going to fight this thing. We don't fight with flesh and blood. We, as Trump put it perfectly the other day, you know, we have to respond when hate with love. That's how it's neutralized. We can't take this stuff personally and just get angry and, and start screaming because you're talking about an interdimensional, huge reality that's way bigger than our pay grade, okay? So the only thing we can do is really just follow Jesus and and have the the teachings, the principles of, of Christ, which ought to be inside of us. You know what I mean? I don't think you need an, any external source to teach you 
when you know when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit in Christ, I mean, it, all that all that knowledge is there because the Holy Spirit is there. All the things, you know, and of course, you know, you, you can also read the Bible and, and all that, but you don't need that. If you didn't have one, you'd still be okay. If you do, great, because then you'll just have confirmation after confirmation that what it says in there is true to your experience. And uh, you know, I know there's a lot of fakery with all this uh, and corruption with all Christian thing. And you know, Jesus addressed that in uh, the second chapter of the Book of Revelation. Of uh, the headquarters of Satan would be, you know, one of the churches of Asia, but really the headquarters of Satan is the entire church system. <laughs> as, as is the headquarters of Satan at, and at the FBI or anywhere else. It would take a spiritual revival of, of just an amazing proportion to turn the United States around. Anyway, we don't get our salvation from government. And again, I'm not angry with the FBI. You know what I mean? I'm not I'm 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 angry at the situation but I'm not angry with people because like I say love and I don't talk about this enough but um at the end of the day I really am love rather than hate because not because of me but because the Lord made me that way and I I could tell when hate was you know starting to consume when they pick on Trump I get so angry when it's unfounded, you know, and they just hate him for, you know, the Trump derangement syndrome. They're just crazy. And, you know, I mean, I remember talking with friends, you know, here and there on the phone and how we just, you know, we're so frustrated. We just, to help God, we just have World War III and nuke the whole place and all that. But at the end of the day, that's not me. The Lord rescues me from that kind of thinking. Because, see, I'm not of this world in that way. There's just... For me to adopt that kind of thing would be to throw away my life, what I know to be my life. That's what they're trying to get me to do. They're trying to get me like in a mano a mano fight. I, I, you know, it, it would be fine if it was mano a mano. I don't come from here. This is not my place. I'm here sojourning through, you know, and I see how they are. I see how it is, but at the end of the day, my Lord is my Savior, not my country, not my earth, not the moon, not the stars, not the sun, the Lord. So unto him I owe the shed blood of Jesus Christ washed me clean and paid, bought my contract, you know, with evil, with the devil, giving them the right to do whatever they want to me. And I got to tell you this, when you really understand that, that's like ends a lot of, you know, talking about the TIs and stalking, well... A lot of TIs are really bitter. Really bitter. And, you know, I understand that because they've just been picked on unfairly. A lot of you people that are bullied at work and all that, you're really bitter. A lot of you people that have been, you know, but, but see, you're, you're, you're losing sight of who you are. And um, this is so important. I, I really need to pound this in. Who we are as real Christians, you know, people that are really sold out to the Lord and nothing else. You know, we're, we, we don't own this. Uh, we, we don't fight over this turf because it's not our turf. It's, it's um, uh, who we are in Christ is, um, is of God. And that's not the way the world works. And that's not the world. And uh, and that's where, you know, a lot of people can interpret it all the way. To, you know, they have all kinds of physical interpretations like, oh, well, that means no violence and pacifism and not being in the military and all this stuff. And that, that's got nothing to do with it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying at the, fundamentally at the end of the day, it's not really what job you have if you're in the military or a police officer or, or whatever that has to, uh, you know, occasionally use violence. Um, that's not what I mean. It's your heart. You know, it's whether you, you know, if you're, you know, you see people on the left, they're very passionately involved. This is their whole thing. This is their entire world here. So they can be much more, you know, it's, it's not really my world. This is their whole thing. And they, they're going to fight tooth and nail for their turf, their territory, what they feel is theirs being, you know, worlders, being earth dwellers. This is, this is their world. 
But at the end of the day, it's not really my world. And I have to be an ambassador ultimately of the Lord. Ultimately, God is love. I cannot and I do not go. I get consumed. Had had a bunch of the challenges I had the last couple of years happened, say, 20 years ago. I probably would be consumed with hatred. You know, and I have... You know, in the past, you know, you can't deal with these people. You can't reason with them. They're, they're, you know, and, but in terms of personal hatred, it doesn't rise to that level because of who I am in Christ. It's absurd. I mean, it's, it's got nothing to do with me. You know what I mean? I get caught up in it and then the Lord has to back me down. Why does he have to back me down? Because it's not my fight, man. This is not my fight. Same with politics. Ultimately, I do what I do, being led by the Lord to have Trump's back, whatever. And we pray that we'll have a good outcome, be able to, you know, make America a better place and all that stuff for our kids and, you know, bring God back. And you don't see that happening right now. No, you don't. But ultimately, fight wise, hate wise, um, fighting over turf wise, it's not really ultimately my fight. It's really, you know, God dealing with his, you know, with individuals and what they will choose and who they will choose to serve. And if they choose darkness, they choose, you know, social conformity, going along with the crowd, uh, being an earth dweller, you know, fighting over each thing there is, I don't know, over the scraps. You know, that's up to them. You know, uh, I don't hate them. I know they have to hate on me, but they don't even know me. You know what I mean? So it's like when they, their hatred doesn't land as a personal insult because... Again, they don't know us. To to them, we are. It's insanity to even consider the truth about who we are. It it would drive them into into complete depression and suicidal thoughts and everything else, because they'd realize there's the only fight they have is with themselves. You know, so it's not you know the Christian patriot. It's really the Christian who acts patriotic because he's inspired by, you know, the Lord to do so. Not Christian patriot like they both have the same weight. They don't. So I hope that makes sense because if, you know, I told you a few things, right? They plan to do in Trump. <laughs> they There's some really bad things out there. And the thing is, is whatever happens, we belong to the Lord first. And foremost, and if the country goes after all being exposed and the country goes, then it's a big lesson. It's a big lesson in justice, but it's got nothing ultimately, if the country goes, prospers or the country fails, it's got nothing ultimately to do with us. Whether, it, whether we are grace, whether we abound or are abased, uh, still the same love in Jesus Christ. You know, whether the country prospers or not, or whether we get back to rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, leave it to beaver, whatever, you know, whatever thought people had about what life was, uh, that's irrelevant. It's who we are in Christ first. Your nation doesn't really, is very much secondary. You, you serve the good in your nation because you're inspired by Jesus Christ to do so because you're a, a child of God. You're a child of the Most High. So you do, but, but you don't mistake your country for God or your politicians for saviors. And so that should be the end of sorrow right there. They're going to disappoint. The country will disappoint. You know, Trump will disappoint ultimately, you know, and already has in, in some circles. Uh, man will fail. See to it, though, that we don't go down with that failure, and that part of that is to check yourself. Do you have personal animus toward anyone, really? Okay, let's take somebody that you really can't stand. Rachel Maddow or Chris Matthews or, or Morning Joe or any of these you know, enemies of Trump. But do you really personally hate them? No. You, I don't. I know you don't. Uh, they personally hate you. No, no, no hold on. They personally hate you. But what do you care? Their personal hatred is based on ignorance. They don't know you. 
you know, Bill Maher personally hates, you know, he doesn't go after Trump anymore. He only goes after Trump supporters because that's the big thing once they get back in power. They, they want to they wanna prosecute the war. They want to go after Trump. This is what they did in Nazi Germany and, you know, USSR and, you know, China. This, this is the same old, same old failure of humanity, becoming dictators and then rounding up people that uh, you feel are different from you. Um, the, a total failure of complete ignorance. But whether they target you or not, do you personally hate them? Well, you may not want to break br- bread with the one that's going to stab you in the back. I understand that. I've, I kind of have that policy now myself. I understand that, you know, um, if they're nice to you, maybe they're playing you, you know. Maybe they're trying to find something on you to turn you in. Maybe they want to stalk you. You know, gang stalking is now mainstream. <laughs> I, I think you can see that, right? It's totally mainstream. It really originated, you know, the, the, the deep, dark Stasi and all that, and you know, in, in, in the beloved Hitler's Germany, which, you know, people in the uh, Illuminati here and basically Skull and Bones, all, all those cats, they really basically worship the ground Hitler walked on, you know what I mean? And they, they want to get back to that Stasi stuff of Eastern Germany. They want to get back to the Cold War, you know, against Russia. They want to get back to, you know, Kafka-esque stuff, like rounding the usual suspects up to question them about, you know, things and and have you ask, well, what is my crime, sir? And and not telling you, but you stay in jail. You know, (laughs) it's basically the good old days. And, uh, you know, they're always going to be the same. You know, they always are worlders. They're always involved in the occult. They're always involved in uh, eugenics, abortion, um, you know, third eye, uh, satanic practices, rituals, uh, secret societies. It's always the same bunch, you know, doing the same exact thing. So it's, it's been repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated, you know, from, from the, from the age of old. And it always has to do with man getting together to try to beat God and try to become like, look at the book of Job. The book of Job explains it perfectly. Oldest book in the Bible, the whole idea of, of Lucifer. And, you know, is to liberate everyone to be a Lucifer so they can all put themselves above God, above the Most High. That's what they're using AI for. That's what they're using modern technology for. That's what they're using robotics for. It's all about putting themselves above, beating death, putting themselves up above God. And therefore winning. And at the same time, anyone who truly is of God, persecuting the hell out of them. Because every time they do, they feel they get... uh, They get a reward. But at the end of the day, you know that's what they're going to do. They've they've done that to you at your, uh, I've heard all your stories. So I've, you know, your place of work, your your home, the the, the PTA meeting, uh, CPS trying to take your children away. I mean, I've heard story after story about persecution. But every one of you is a uh, Jesus-loving, Jesus-following Christian and should we then be surprised that the the architecture, the the apparati of society, um, you know, targets you when you're walking with Jesus, which is the biggest crime there is? Anyway, you're not a Christian patriot. You're a Christian who acts patriotic. You know, because that's you know, it's because you're serving God, and in serving God, you just happen to be patriotic. Patriotic meaning now, today, what I mean by that is constitution affirming, you know, uh, human rights, declaration of independence, founding, um, sustaining, you know, rooting out corruption, doing the right thing, trying to have a good country, whatever, just doing the right thing where a lot of people are doing the wrong thing, you know, being honest, being a, a good citizen, you know, being honest, being a being a being a contributor to the good in society, you know, raising your children right, you know, you know what I mean. That to me, that's patriotic. It's just doing the right thing. Uh, they try to take it into some white white supremacist thing, which of course is completely hilarious and and completely ridiculous. But it there's no end. You know, the way we should look at them, uh, me thinks is sometimes it's just purely comedic, their rage. Purely comedic, the, 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 the things they say, like, for example, um, the NRA did the shooting. 
you know, let's get everyone in the NRA. I mean, if they could do it, these people, they're the same as the global communists or whatever, uh, the media, whatever. What they would do if they could is, you know, they're not, like I say, they're no longer interested in Trump. What they want are Trump supporters. And Hillary was going to round up the deplorables, remember? I mean, she, you know, she was going to shut it all down, shut down free speech. And they want everything locked down to a totalitarian state just to stop and ultimately it goes to a spiritual war just to stop people of Jesus from just being who they are. Ultimately, they want to hunt down not Trump supporters. They want to hunt down the followers of Jesus who are not dependent on their hierarchy or, you know, dependent on, you know, who do not worship celebrities, who, who are not really towing the line. They want to punish those people that are self-contained in the Lord. And so... The only response, and Trump pointed out perfectly, he said, we will gonna, you know, respond, uh, uh, what was it, Trish? Hatred with love? Yeah, he said... Uh, Get on that mic there and tell me what he said. Well, I don't, I don't uh, have it right in front of me, but it was something like, uh, respond to hatred with love, with... To cruelty with kindness. Kindness, right. Those are very powerful words. Yes. We very respond comforting. hatred with love. The only way you can do that is because you're in Christ, because you have the love of God, because your world is really the Lord. You don't have to hate. So therefore, you can love them that hate you, but it's a natural thing, not a virtuous thing. You don't need to virtue signal about how great you are. It's basically the normal orientation in the Lord is love, not hate. Because, and the bottom line is, it's because you don't have the same world to relate to. It's not the same thing. You've been set free by Jesus Christ. You're in, you're, 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 you're on your way. They are screaming, yelling, you know, they're the deaf, dumb, and blind, you know, blathering and blithering and, attacking and screaming and yelling and, 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 and killing and whatever they do, but they're just the seething masses that don't know anything. I mean, how, you know, it's, it's kind of like taking a, you know, and we're talking in spiritual terms, you know, they're spiritual babies. So it's like taking a baby and holding it responsible for, you know, having set the house on fire rather than, you know, having left the matches too close to the baby. 